Hello my good friends, welcome to Digimon Explained. My name is Jesse and in this video we are going to do something a little bit different. There is something I actually had in mind for a long while and thought that it was about time that I just went for it and made the video. Maybe you guys haven't noticed, though I'm sure most of you do, I have a certain fascination for dragons. Don't ask me where it come from, I have no idea. Maybe it's because back in the days I used to enjoy exploring and studying dinosaurs. I literally had books and pictures of dinosaurs and I wasn't even 10. Now, dragons do look like dinosaurs, but with wings and they can spit fire. So I think I associated both and I loved both of them. I still do actually. And now with House of Dragons out there, I found my love for dragons rekindled and that's maybe what inspired me to make this video. After digging a little deeper in the universe of dragons, I learned something very interesting. I learned that there is a great variety in dragons. From wyverns to hydra to drakes and keep going, it's crazy. In the Dark Souls series, it is said that these different dragon types are in fact a sort of adaptation. Evolution if you want. And here's a short fragment of fellow YouTuber Vati Vidya who said the following about the dragons in Dark Souls would not last forever. The everlasting dragons were vulnerable now, and were forced to adapt to this unfamiliar and hostile world. So they gave birth, and slowly began to mutate and deviate in their evolution. Wyverns, serpents, man-serpents and basilisks, the imperfect, the crossbreeds and the wretches, dragons that spit fire, lightning, poison and corrosion, some even caught the undead curse. And so it was that despite Gwyn's best efforts... So, in the Dark Souls series, dragons evolved to become very different than their initial appearance. It was a question of survival, where adaptation became a must. The same story can be retrieved in the Digimon franchise, which has its fair share of dragon types. In fact, I think, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that the Digimon franchise has perhaps the most variety in terms of dragon in a franchise. From very long sea serpents living deep in the oceans, to quadrupedal dragons with wings, and even quadrupedal dragons without wings. You even have wingless humanoid dragons, hydra dragons, amphitheer dragons, which only has its wings as limbs, you name it. And these dragons are going to be the main topic of this video. You see, the biggest difference between, let us say, the dragons from Dark Souls and the dragons from Digimon is that in the former, in Dark Souls, these dragons are organic. They work a bit like us humans and animals, meaning that they are all submissive to evolution processes. In Digimon, the dragons are digital. Their whole existence is based on data data, which can be transferred, copied, corrupted, modified, created, you name it. This means that these dragons evolve and will evolve differently. All roads lead to Rome, as we say. For the dragons in Digimon, all roads actually lead to Dracomon. We did talk about this Digimon in a separate video, link towards it is in the description box. Even if I don't like to say it, Dracomon is the most important dragon in the Digimon franchise, because for dragons and all their variants, everything starts from this one. All different dragon Digimon in existence, along with the different dragon Digimon types and the dragon's raw family, can thank their existence from Dracomon, who is an ancient, pure-blooded dragon Digimon. And I am putting an extra emphasis on the pure-blooded Dragon Digimon, as Dracomon might be the only one belonging only to the dragon's raw family and nothing else. We're talking about a family of, generally speaking, draconic Digimon or those who dwell in volcanic areas. Dracomon is the progenitor of all dragon Digimon in the franchise. And with progenitor, I mean that all dragon Digimon originate from this little dragon because it is its data that can always be found back in all other Dragon Digimon. And normally, I repeat, normally, all these Dragon Digimon will have the name Dramon at the end of their names. 
Bergamon, Erdramon, Grand Dramon, you get the drill. Why did I say normally? Well, to be worthy of carrying the Dramon name, a Digimon typically needs to possess some Dragon data in their Digicores. The problem is that these Dramon data can sometimes be either too low, completely inexistent, or simply overshadowed by other data. That is why not all, presumably Dragon Digimon, will walk around with Dramon at the end of their names. Some might not even look like dragons at all. Let me give you an example. War Greymon is officially a Dragon Man Digimon, which means it has some data in it that will link it back to Dracomon, essentially making it another descendant. Yet, it doesn't carry the Dramon name. However, it still is a Dracomon descendant despite missing the name because the very weapons it carries, the Dramon Killers, weapons specifically designed to kill Dracomon's descendants, can simultaneously kill War Greymon itself. There is another reason why I took War Greymon as an example. You see, War Greymon is not only one who walks around with dragon data, it is also one who walks around with the flame powers of Ancient Greymon, a legendary warrior who gave its abilities to the dragon Digimon, such as those among the Greymon species Digimon, enabling them to use fire. But here's a twist. Greymon, War Greymon's champion, is not a dragon but a dinosaur type. In a way, it somewhat means that the dinosaurs in the Digimon universe are somewhat treated as subspecies of dragons. They are related. Because it's not only the Greymon species that can use fire, you can also have other dinosaurs like Tyrannomon and Vermilimon who can both use fire. But not all dinosaur Digimon have inherited the flame. Think of Ankylomon, Alomon, or even Triceramon. Interestingly enough, the same goes with Dragon Digimon. Not all Dragon Digimon inherited Ancient Greymon's ability to use fire. In fact, most Dragon Digimon were, I guess, not worthy enough or simply did not inherit Ancient Greymon's flame because most cannot use fire at all. Uryumon is a dragon Digimon that can't use fire, it only uses its swords in battle. Pay attention, despite being a dragon, it doesn't even carry the Dramon name. Arrester Dramon is another dragon Digimon who carries the Dramon name but doesn't even walk around with the dragon's raw data, only the nature spirits and virus busters data. And guess what? It can't use fire. In fact, the only thing it can do is fight in close range using punches and its tail. Also, it doesn't quite look like your typical dragon, bipedal and a humanoid in appearance. Not a very typical dragon. Maybe last example of one who does look like a dragon? Imperial Dramon in its dragon mode. Now this one can use fire, but that is not its strongest of attacks. It either prefers to fire a huge blast of Positronic energy, or it fires supermassive dark matter, swallowing everything within a dark space and completely annihilating everything within a radius of a few hundred meters around the impact point of the dark matter. And this Digimon belongs not only to the Dragon's Raw family, but also to the Nature Spirits family, the Metal Empire family, the Wind Guardian family, and the Dark Area family. So, quite a lot of data which is making it deviate from your standard pure-blooded Dragon Digimon. The irony is that even Dracomon itself, as the progenitor of Dramon species Digimon, will continue to evolve by adding more and more different data from its environment and more, meaning that it will also end up becoming less pure, quote-unquote less pure in blood. And when it becomes a Grand Dramon, for example, it can't even use fire and can't fly anymore. Maybe as a side note, I'm wondering which Digimon is the oldest between Dracomon and Ancient Greymon. They both are ancient, so we can presume they first came into existence in around the same era. Feel free to write down in the comment section who you believe should be the oldest. Now, the point of this video. Thanks to Dracomon's data, there are about 22 confirmed dragon types in existence, and each of these types have at least one Digimon or more. 
We are going to go through all these 22 types to learn what makes them unique. Some Dragon and Digimon were also misplaced in their category and some didn't even get a type. I'll make sure to mention those too. Let us proceed. We will start exploring the category of dragons I call the Young Dragons. A name I gave because in this category you will mostly find dragon types of very young dragons, some of which were not even touched by other data for rain to dragons. The first type are the Baby Dragon Digimon. These are the dragons at the in-training level, otherwise known as Baby 2. From their appearance, it can sometimes be hard to tell whether or not they have some dragon heritage. However, when we take a look at Baby Edmond's profile, that's when you learn that you need to look at the data and not per se at the appearance. Baby Edmond is a Digimon that was only recently discovered, but it has been made clear through data analysis that it contains a program code specific to ancient Digimon and that it is related to the long-lost ancient species of Digimon. It is highly likely that we are talking about Dracomon, but there are other ancient dragon Digimon. We will get to them in a moment. The second type are the small dragons. These are dragons at the rookie level, which comes after the in-training level. Starting from there, many little dragons began to acquire various types of data, making them look entirely different than your average dragon. Some developed wings, others gained a highly developed tail, some were evolved to become more prominent in close range quarters, and some dragon Digimon, like Blucomon, grew to even detest high temperatures. Its entire body is made mainly out of ice despite being a dragon descendant. Also, we once made a video discussing Snow Agumon. We learned that even dinosaurs are capable of existing in polar regions and survive there. So both Agumon and Blucomon, as they live in those polar regions, it shouldn't be a surprise to see them digital further into beings that look completely different than dragons. To finish with a category I called Young Dragons, there is a type that is simply called Dragon. Now this is a special one. In the Wikimon page, for the category of dragon type, you will find Digimon in there that make sense and some who do not. This should normally be a type only meant for Dracomon up till its champion form, Core Dramon, because of their dragon purity. Core Dramon's own profile says that a Digimon bearing the name Dramon always have dragon factor data in their digicore, and the higher the percentage of that data, the more the shape of their body resembles a dragon type. As Core Dramon's dragon factor data has reached 100%, it gained this appearance because it is undoubtedly a pure-blooded dragon Digimon. So seeing Core Dramon and Dracomon as dragon type Digimon makes perfect sense. However, those of the likes of Arrester Dramon, who don't even have a dragon's raw attribute and cannot spit fire, makes little to no sense to belong to the same dragon type. I see it more in the category of Inspired Dragon. We will get to that in a moment. And same goes with Volk Dramon, a volcanic dragon Digimon that inhabits the magma beds of the active volcanoes that dot the digital world. I see it more in the category of Elemental Dragons. We will also get to that in a moment. To finish, in the Dragon type category, you can also find Pale Dramon, Blucomon's champion form. By this form, Pale Dramon should have gotten its own type called Ice Dragons, which I would place in the category of Elemental Dragons. Unfortunately, the Ice Dragon type does not exist despite having one proper example of a dragon that can perfectly manage to live in the colder regions. Unfortunately. Let us now discuss the next category, the Elemental Dragons. The second category of dragon types we are going to explore, I named it myself the Elemental Dragons category. A category of dragon Digimon who are, at least at the champion level, who either have a strong preference for a particular habitat, meaning either deep in the ocean, down below in the earth's crusts, or even high in the sky. These elemental dragons ended up adapting themselves completely based on their habitat and also based on a particular affinity for an element. The first type in this category, you have the Earth Dragon Digimon. I mentioned Grand Dramon already. 
Dragmon's ultimate evolution and perfect example of an earth dragon. It lives in tunnels it carved deep underground and seldom comes to the surface. When you go way deeper in the earth, way below the confines of Grand Dramon, you will find another earth dragon Digimon called Volcanic Dramon, a dragon said to swim in magma and one said to live so deep underground that not even Digimon that move about there can reach it. Near the Earth Dragon Digimon, you have the Rock Dragon Digimon. Lavogaritamon is one example. Notice that there is no Dramon behind its name. Lavogaritamon is a dragon who dwells in the magma beds of active volcanoes around the digital world. And as a Rock Dragon Digimon, it does its name justice as it loves to scatter mineral dust in battle, which are used to explode once the enemy is covered with it. I would personally put Volk Dramon among the Rock Dragon Digimon type, instead of the Dragon type, which should be reserved for Dragon Digimon with only Dragon data in their Digicore. In the depths of the net ocean, you can find Ocean Dragon Digimon. Tylomon is an example and in fact a special case. You see, Tylomon is in fact based on the Tylosaurus Proriger, which is an aquatic dinosaur, which is somewhat of a proof of what I said before that dinosaur Digimon are somewhat treated as subspecies of dragon Digimon. And as you can see, Dialomon grew to become totally different from your average dragon. Its form is made to live only in the oceans. Speaking of, there are other ocean Digimon who are linked to dragons and yet aren't classified as such. First one is Sea Dramon, a long serpentine Digimon which carries the Dramon name and yet is not categorized as an ocean dragon Digimon. It is quite odd because, while it is categorized as a sea animal Digimon, there is more than enough proof that it does belong to the ocean dragon type. In Digimon Season 1, it fought War Greymon, but as a metal Seedramon. It was killed, and main reason for its demise is because War Greymon's Dramon destroyers were highly effective. A Bidramon is another special example of an ocean dragon. Obviously with a design that doesn't look like a dragon, but is categorized as a crustacean Digimon. It walks around, well, actually, it swims around with the Dramon name and is a known non-conformist of the Dramon type, meaning that it does not conform to generally accepted dragon standards and yet, if it gets pushed, it displays offensive abilities typical of the Dramon type. In the sky, you have the known Sky Dragons. These dragons are experts with their flight capabilities and have an advantage in the air that is almost unrivaled. Almost unrivaled. Because there are bird Digimon out there with capabilities exceeding some of the mightiest of dragons. Wing Dramon, one of Dracomon's ultimate digivolution, is one example of a sky dragon. It adapted in a way to become extremely proficient in the sky. It is said to have scales on its wings which are capable of blocking gravity. And that is why it is able to fly without even flapping its wings, and it has an airspeed exceeding Mach 20. Kano Weissmon is another example of a sky dragon. It can close its wings to then charge like a bullet of light, showing speed you wouldn't imagine a being of that caliber to have. In the Wikimon page for the category of sky dragons, you can also find Metallic Dramon in it. I admit, I had some troubles to categorize this Digimon because it is indeed an expert in the air, set to even fly at the speed of light up to a point, many other flight Digimon cannot catch sight of it. However, because it gets its advantage, mostly from its metallic robotic body, I decided that it would be best to see it be placed in the category of inspired dragons, more specific among the machine dragon type, we will get to that in a moment. Another type among the elemental dragon Digimon are the flame dragon Digimon. I believe the idea behind this type is to have dragon Digimon who are constantly in flames. A bit like Pale Dramon who has a body consisting of ice, but in this case it would be with flames. And the only confirmed member among the flame dragon Digimon is Flare Lizamon, a hot-blooded Digimon with flames throughout its body generated by its high temperature skin combusting. Again, it has no Dramon in its name, it has no wings, and really doesn't look like your typical dragon. 
yet it is categorized as one because of the dragon data inside its digicore. Now to finish with the elemental dragons, you have the light dragon Digimon. These are Digimon who use light as a means to an end. Shine Greymon is one such Digimon. It makes use of the red hot solar energy it accumulates. It concentrates light energy to its utmost limit to then fire it. A lot of its moves involves light too, including when it is in its burst mode and in its rune mode. I wish the flame and light dragons would get explored a bit more because it does feel as if only the surface has been scratched. The potential is most certainly there. Before jumping to the inspired dragons, I do have to say the following. There is a Digimon out there, actually two, that should belong to the category of elemental dragons but instead isn't seen as a dragon and was classified as a vegetation Digimon. I'm talking about Hydramon, a gigantic Digimon that mostly takes root in swampland. While being a plant Digimon, it belongs to the dragon's raw family and is carrying the Dramon name. It's just that Dracomon's data found its way into the swamplands to give birth to one of, in my opinion, the greatest dragon variants I've seen so far. I would give Hydramon, the plant dragon type, along with Petal Dramon, who is also one who carries the Dramon name and is clearly inspired by plants. We came to the category I call the inspired dragons. In this category, you will find different types of dragon Digimon, with designs clearly inspired by other creatures like animals, generals, and even machines. First type we are going to discuss is the beast dragon type. These are quite special. In this category, you only have Digimon belonging to the Digivolution line of Dorumon and Ryudamon, so in a way they created their own dragon type. You see, these two Digimon are prototype Digimon created by Egdrasil, the host computer of a particular server in the Digimon universe. What's special about Dorumon and Ryudamon is that during an experiment, the potent life force data of dragons and generals were stored in the deepest parts of their Digi core. This made Ryudamon digivolve into dragon Digimon of the likes of Hisieriumon, and later on, in its mega form, Uriumon, a dragon who uses swords in combat. In Dorumon's case, it grew to digivolve into Dorugurumon, a colossal beast dragon Digimon that, just like Uriumon, cannot use fire, but instead fires supermassive iron spheres more than 10 times its own size, crushing the opponent in one bit. When it digivolves, Dorugurumon becomes Dorugoramon, another beast dragon Digimon that instead became bipedal but with wings. There is another beast type Digimon who isn't classified as a beast dragon type Digimon but should have, Raidramon. Now this one is particularly interesting and a special case. You see, in the old Digimon days, Digimon experienced a lot of difficulties to digivolve. In fact, they still do. But as the environment was too hostile, they ended up finding a way to digivolve. In fact, Armor Digivolve. Ray Dramon is Vimon's armor digivolution when it uses the Egg of Friendship, an egg with the attribute of Thunder. Now, as most digivolutions which occur through this egg have something to do with ice, lightning or mammals, we see Vimon, a small dragon, become the quadrupedal Ray Dramon. In a way, it is as if Vimon's dragon data was combined with the data slash powers of the Digi Egg of Friendship to create a dragon Digimon with a totally different appearance, a beast dragon Digimon. Let us discuss the next type. In the bird dragon category, you will only find Jazamon, who I believe to be misplaced. It is above all a machine Digimon shaped like a bird. There's another Digimon that actually best fit this spot, Birdramon, a giant bird carrying the Dramon name while simultaneously not being considered a dragon. It has an appearance shrouded in blazing flames. It somewhat reminded me of Flare Lizamon, so I can understand why some would also place it among the flame dragon type. Jazamon, in my opinion, would be best suited for the machine dragon type Digimon, where I believe its entire line should be placed. 
There's nothing organic about them, nothing that would show that they have the same weaknesses as most other Dragon Digimon because of their metallic advantages. Machine Digimon tend to very often be created by third parties and it looks as if Jazamon and its line was specifically designed to excel in the air. Now, that doesn't mean that Jazamon, despite all its mechanical parts, was in fact created by third parties. It is still Digimon we are talking about, it is possible that it just naturally was born as a metallic Digimon. Break Dramon one of Dragomon's mega level form has a different story despite being part of the machine dragon type. That is because it evolved via hacking and obtained the design data for various construction equipment. However, in exchange for excellent mechanical performance, it has no organic parts and no motives nor emotions. Something that can be found back in most other dragon Digimon. In a way, Break Dramon designed itself, via hacking that is, to excel in crushing techniques and ground control, just like what you'd expect in a construction site. We are almost at the last category, but I first need to mention yet another unconfirmed dragon type which I believe would perfectly belong to the inspired dragons category. As I said before, the inspired dragons is a category for dragons who have designs based on other stuff like machines or creatures like birds and mammals, that is when you take into account Vimon when it uses the Digi Egg of Friendship. Warmon can use the Digi Egg of Courage, which is an egg that has something to do with fire or dinosaurs. And remember what I said before, it is possible that dinosaur Digimon are somewhat of a subspecies to dragon Digimon. When Warmon uses the Egg of Courage, it will armor Digivolve into Shadramon. Pay attention, there is the Dramon at the end of its name. We are here talking about a Digimon classified as an insectoid Digimon who aren't exactly known to use fire and yet, just like Flamedramon who is a Vimon who also used the Egg of Courage, Shadramon gained the ability to manipulate fire. Now why is this Digimon a particular case? In a way, the Digimon was not exactly meant to be, so to speak. To be precise, it took the form of an insect humanoid, but its form had an unfortunate adverse reaction to the Digi Egg of Courage, and that is why it became fiendish. Maybe the combination of insect data and dragon data isn't a thing that should happen, but credit to Shadramon, who I believe is the first to have created what I would call the insect dragon type. Now comes the category of dragons I call Dragons for Law and Order These are usually dragons of different types, either hidden in scarcity, either blessed with a certain holiness, or they were given the responsibility to stop calamity and prevent the spread of chaos. First dragon type in this category that we are going to discuss is that of the mythical dragons, a type where Vidramon and Exvimon belong to. Vidramon is considered mythical because even with the vastness of the digital world, it is said to only exist in one area, the Folder continent. Still, despite being aware of this information, Vidramon's existence remains extremely precious and rarely ever encountered. Its way of life is a mystery, but from what is known is that it exhibits powers that surpasses even that of Ultimates. So, Vidramon is almost a mythological character whose existence is doubted and yet the stories tell that it displays incredible power. Pay attention, Vidramon doesn't have wings, so it really is grounded. Exvimon, on the other hand, is also a Digimon that resembles a character coming out of a myth as it is also quite rare to spot one. Even more rare than Vidramon as it is a pure breed of Vidramon. As a pure breed, it did end up developing wings, but when considering the proportions of its body and the height of its wings, it almost doesn't look as if Exvimon really was meant to fly, it feels as if it was meant to remain hidden. Everything changes once V Dramon digivolves. This would bring us to the Holy Dragon type. Aero Vidramon, along with all other Holy Dragon Digimon, can be summarized as the following. Extremely powerful and very rare to spot one. If spotting Vidramon 
is already a shocker, you will probably never see an aerial Vidramon. That is because only the veteran warriors among Vidramon can ever attain this form, so its existence is already becoming a legend. God Dramon, along with Qinglongmon, otherwise known as Azulongmon, and Holy Dramon are also deemed as Holy Dragon Digimon. They are three members of the four great dragons, which could also be seen as its own type of dragon types. The four great dragons are deified entities in and on itself with powers so great that you usually won't see them interfere in problems that the more common Digimon would go through. Another dragon type is that of the ancient dragons, and these are arguably the most powerful dragons in the Digimon franchise and normally these are dragons that don't exist anymore. There are two confirmed ancient dragons. Ancient Greymon, one of the ten legendary warriors who saved the digital world in the distant past. It is said that its strength surpasses that of current mega level Digimon and by its grace Greymon species Digimon along with other dinosaur and dragon Digimon inherited its abilities to use fire. Imperial Jamon is also an ancient dragon Digimon that existed in ancient times, extremely powerful with very devastating attacks. It is said that this dragon form has never been seen, controlling it is next to impossible and depending on how it is raised, it may either become a savior or a god of destruction, which it ends up becoming as an Imperial Jamon dragon mode, Black. It gets this form when it is incapable of controlling its excessive power. Now Imperial Jamon is capable of changing modes, that is when it also changes types to become part of the ancient Dragon Man type. As a Dragon Man, it becomes far easier for an Imperial Jamon to control the excessive power of its dragon form. It also acquired great intellect. In fact, it almost looks as if this change from dragon to humanoid symbolizes the change between, let us say, chaos and excessiveness to great intellect and control. However, dragon powers are actually quite hard to control. There's a humanoid Imperial Jamon Black in existence, one who take great delight to target particularly good-willed Digimon. Now, while the ancient Dragon Man should normally not exist any longer, some Digimon took the inspiration. In other words, the ancient Dragon Man Digimon paved the way for the Dragon Man type. These are Dragon Humanoid Digimon who are all of them bipedal. You will see them carry around various weapons and armor. They are very powerful, with the potential to cause great damage, but my personal opinion, they don't seem quite as mysterious, quite as threatening as dragons. They don't inspire the same fear and, if I can permit myself, their powers are not per se exceptional in comparison to other dragons. Again, it might have something to do with this change between the dangerous quadrupedal, feral and big dragons to the more docile and calm bipedal dragons who have appearances resembling humans. Among this type you will find many Digimon. War Greymon, carrier of the Dragon Killer, Dino Humon, a dragon man with the appearance of a humanoid lizard, Cyclomon, the one-eyed dragon man, Dorbikmon, the general of the Fire Fury army of the Big Death Stars and leader of a multitude of dragon Digimon, and you will find way more, way more. Notice that most among the Dragon Man type don't even carry the Dramon name any longer. Now to finish with the category of Dragons for Law and Order, there is the type called Dragon Warrior. Only one Digimon was capable of reaching this level, Kaiser Greymon, a transcendent species who possesses powers said to have surpassed even the might of the original 10 legendary warriors. The Dragon Warrior type shouldn't be seen as a sort of superior type to that of the Dragon Man. Kaiser Greymon came to be because it bears the power of the nine dragons veins that flow through Gaia. Because of it, it demonstrates abilities that are unfathomable. I will explain that properly in a video, just like the one I made to explain Dragon Man Digimon Victory Greymon.
there is another unconfirmed dragon type, which is called Dragon Emperor. It is in fact a title given to the Holy Knight Digimon Examon. Now, Examon is a dragon Digimon who deserves its own type. No dragon Digimon is as massive as this one. In fact, its data size is so extraordinary that traditional digital tools were unable to completely render it, meaning that its existence was only discovered when computers and technology became advanced enough to render Examon properly. Although it plays a fundamental role among the Royal Knight Digimon, who are all of them sacred knights with tasks of protecting the digital world, Examon is said to be simultaneously a being which stands at the top of all Dragon Digimon. Hence, it was given the title Dragon Emperor. Even if it is officially classified as a Holy Knight, I believe that it should also get its own Dragon type, namely the Dragon Emperor type. As we have the category of dragons for law and order, there is obviously also the category for what I call dragons for chaos. These are dragons with evil intentions and an evil nature. The first type are those belonging to the evil dragon type. These are dragons who simply have a bad nature. Megidramon is the best example. It is a member of the four great dragon Digimon. While the three others have good personalities, Megidramon's personality is so fiendish that it doesn't bear the slightest resemblance to the other three. Its very existence is such a digital hazard that its powers had to be sealed. Devidramon is also categorized as an evil Digimon, but to me personally, it was misplaced. I mean, sure, it is evil, but there is a category I know it will suit it much better. We'll get there in a moment. I would also put Vritramon in this category. Not that it is as evil as Megidramon, but Vritramon is categorized as evil because of what it embodies. Vritra is an adversary of the king of the devas Indra in Hinduism. I won't explain much about Vritra here, but make sure to check the pinned message where I will explain what Vritra embodies in a YouTube short video. So again, evil dragon Digimon are those who were simply born with a nature that don't necessarily wish for the good of its environment or those with the capability of turning evil. That is why I would even put Grolmon in this category, because depending on its trainer and the environment it grows in, it might either fight for justice or become the one who causes chaos. Then we have the Dark Dragon Digimon type. I noticed that these Digimon were created by third parties to function as dark entities. Megadramon is one example. It was programmed to destroy everything. Its whole existence is the epitome of a computer virus with capabilities to penetrate computer networks and more. Dark Dramon is another Digimon of that same type. On the verge of its digivolution, a large quantity of dark matter was applied, and after its digivolution, it ran wild and broke out. Even those who were responsible for this digivolution cannot secure its whereabouts. There is one other Digimon that should earn its spot among the Dark Digimon type, and yet isn't classified as such. Machine Dramon. I do admit that Machine Dramon could also be put among the Machine Dragon type, because ultimately Machine Dramon is a Digimon that was built from zero. It was built by synthesizing the parts of many Cyborg Digimon. But I'd rather put Machine Dramon in this category because while it has incredible intellect, it does not share a self-will and its digi-core contains only evil intentions. That is because someone deliberately planted a program containing evil intentions. So, its purpose is to bring chaos. On top of that, it was also meant to fuse with another Digimon to become one of the most powerful Digimon in the Digiverse with the ability to bend time to its will. So, Dark Dragon Digimon, I see them as Digimon who were created by third parties to work as evil entities. They were designed with the sole purpose to either be evil or to do something evil. This differs from the Machine Dragon Digimon who we discussed previously. Although they are all machines, they are not necessarily created by others with a specific purpose. In fact, some of these Machine Digimon created themselves. Then we come to the two last of dragon types, the Devil Dragons 
and the demon dragons. Before we go ahead let me tell you that sometimes it's a bit difficult to make the distinction between devils and demons. Normally devils can either refer to the supreme spirit of evil, it could refer to Satan, the main opponent of God, and they are sometimes considered to be more fiendish and evil than demons. Demons on the other hand are considered to be evil supernatural beings associated with different cultures and religions and are considered to have a lower position than the devil. Now in Digimon the line is quite blurred, however, after some reflection and reading a bit through the various sources, I believe I have found the right way to make the distinction between the two. We have the devil dragon type, there's only one Digimon in that category, Grimmon. Now Grimmon is the Digimon representation of the Grim Reaper, a berobed skeleton who causes the victim's death by coming to collect that person's soul. As Grimmon represents the Grim Reaper, we could say that it is at the opposite side of God who symbolizes life and not death. So in a sense, Grimmon is a devil who took the form of a dragon. It is by the way in this type that I would put Devidramon who has a name which means devil and dragon. It is a beast that was summoned from the dark area by the devil itself, Devimon. Its personality is the epitome of wickedness and it is unmoved by a spirit of compassion, Devil Digimon. Then, to finish, we have the Demon Dragon Digimon. In the Wikimon page of Demon Dragon type, you can see that Gilmon and Grolmon are there. Again, I'd rather see them among the evil dragon type considering the possibility that they could turn evil. It's not like they have the possibility to choose, but because of circumstances, it could take different routes. Imperial Dragon Dragon Mode has something similar, but it already belongs to the ancient dragon types. But again, this means that Gilmon and its line of dragons will be put at the evil dragon type category, which I think would suit them better, along with Vritramon. But this leaves us with Aizmon, Orochimon, and Nidogmon, who are all of them part of the same Digivolution line. And you will notice that, as the Demon Dragon Digimon they are, they have no real reason to be, aside of bringing senseless chaos and calamity everywhere they go. Let us take Orochimon as an example first, and this one is particularly interesting. You see, Orochimon is actually an ancient dragon Digimon. The difference is that it is truly demonic. In the ancient digital world, meaning probably in the same period of Imperial Dragon Mode, Ancient Greymon and even Dracomon, it was a being that caused so much rage in all its fury and drove areas to devastation that it had to be sealed in order to preserve the harmony of the digital world. So the only thing it cared about was to cause chaos, with no reason, a true demon. And same thing goes with its Digivolution Nidogmon, who repeatedly destroys and absorbs things, leaving nothing behind in its wake. You see, devils make a little more sense in terms of mindset and goals. They are usually also a bit more strategic in their actions. Demons are senseless, thoughtless and care about nothing. They don't care about wealth, no power, nothing. But I do have to say that there are other demon type Digimon in the Digimon universe who are as cunning if not more cunning than devil type Digimon themselves. So. The line between demons and devils in this franchise really is quite blurry, but as we are talking about dragons right now, well in this case demon dragon Digimon, it's going to be less about things like power, wealth, etc, but more about the destructive capabilities. After all, one of the reasons dragons are so loved is because there is this knowledge that they are a force so powerful they will only leave destruction behind and basically no one will be able to stop them. And I believe that demon dragons are normally representing that side of dragons, the side where they are totally unrestricted by either emotions or duty, a dragon let loose so to speak. This is the category of demon dragon type Digimon and also the last confirmed type. Hey guys, this is the end of the video, really really hope you enjoyed it. I love the great variety in dragons that can be found in the Digimon franchise, and I love how Dracomon is the one who paved the way via its data that spread around 
to come to places like hot volcanoes or oceans or the Arctic. I also like that the more evolution one goes through, the less Dracomon would be visible in this Digimon, meaning most end up losing their wings, many don't even look like dragons anymore, others don't carry the German name any longer, the ability to use fire is also sometimes gone, in other words, it's as if dragon Digimon in general are little by little sort of like forgetting their common heritage and ancestry. They become creatures of their own, sometimes even creating their own Digimon type. By the way, I'm sure there are particular dragon types I haven't even mentioned, because they might have been unconfirmed. Feel free to write what I might have missed, feel free to share your opinions about dragon Digimon in general, and try to give us a few ideas of how Digimon developers should continue with dragon stories in Digimon. I'm sure many of you are very curious about that. Also, don't be afraid to admit that you don't agree with some of the things I said, just make sure to express yourselves properly. And also, very important, would you want me to take a look at all other types of Digimon, such as the bird Digimon types or beast Digimon types? They also have their own variants. We can be sure of one thing, Digimon does have a great many types. Anyway, let me know all of that in the comment section. And in case you guys are new, please make sure to subscribe. Obviously, I mean, if you came to the end of this long video, you should at least give me a sub up for the effort, don't you think? Huh? <laughs> I could have easily been chilling with friends or read a nice book, but here I am working myself for you just to get one sub. So please, can you help me out by subbing? Oh, and pressing the like button, which will help me well with the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you are new, know that all my videos are placed in particular Digimon playlists, which are always updated. That way you can catch up on newer and older videos.